Good afternoon, Mr. Garidli. Thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview. Uh, and my first question would be, could you please tell us more about your visit to Strasbourg? Who have you met with and what uh, areas, of, what subjects have you discussed? Uh, thank you for interviewing me. Um, yes, uh, as you correctly uh, mentioned, I'm here in uh, my actually private capacity, but I also represent the Republican Alternative, the organization that uh, is opposing the, pres uh, the incumbent government in Azerbaijan. And our chairman, Agam Marov, has been in jail since February 4, 2013, despite the judgment of the European Court of Human Rights. He's still kept in jail. So I'm here basically to, um, to talk about his case, uh, to learn what the Council of Europe uh, leadership and administration think about uh, what possible uh, progress is still possible. And uh, for that purpose, uh, I met with the Secretary General, Mr. Yagland, uh, President of the Parliamentary Assembly, Mr. Agramund, um, several MPs and uh, permanent delegations. Um, so basically, uh, that's how it went. Uh, in, every, in all our talks, we spoke about the government of case extensively. And um, a, as far as I understood, the government of case is of great concern for the Council of Europe uh, as such. And also, um, the Committee of Ministers is going to dis discuss yet again his case, uh, consider his case in December 6th in the upcoming meeting. Uh, that will be interesting uh, to know uh, what the Azerbaijan authorities would do with that because on November 18th they have scheduled the rehearing of Ilgar Mamar's case at the Supreme Court of Azerbaijan. So I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm hopeful, but um, based on my conversations here in the Council of Europe, I think there might be some progress on that. Uh, thank you very much for your answer. And now I'd like to ask you a question about uh, post-referendum Azerbaijan. Given that uh, your country held a uh, third constitutional referendum introducing far-reaching institutional changes in Azerbaijan, how do you see the future cooperation of Azerbaijan and EU institutions, EU and uh, other European institutions? Well, uh, my personal position and the position of organization I'm representing here uh, is quite negative. We uh, all advocated against the amendment and we used our rights as citizens and voted against those amendments. And uh, we stand on uh, our principles. We believe that those amendments run counter the uh, constitution itself and also uh, the rule of law and democracy and human rights standards of the Council of Europe, which Azerbaijan is a member of. So, uh, in the larger context, Azerbaijan, as a member of the Council of Europe, um, made a yet another step back from those standards. It is very unfortunate and, uh, that uh, we have come to this point. Um, so, I believe that those amendments will further uh, deteriorate uh, relations uh, within the Council of Europe, uh, because as far as I can see from, I always, every way I receive the negative opinions here. Um, and um, let's see, I don't know, uh, anything can happen. In Azerbaijan itself, of course, um, those amendments have closed, uh, seem to be uh, uh, deteriorating any possibility of further dialogue between the government and opposition or civil society at large. Um, the society will be most probably less participatory. The parliament is further weakened. The executive has become even stronger. Uh, there is no uh, hope that judiciary can do anything in that case because the constitutional court itself gave positive opinion on the draft amendments before they were put on board. So in short, this is how it is, uh, but we will continue. Um, our uh, work in Azerbaijan will we'll stand for our principles and continue to oppose those negative the imp and try to prevent the, the negative development as far as possible. Thank you so much for your time.